do you want to start getting results like this instead of this Whoa, keep that? watching the video to find out how hey guys welcome back to the channel it's JB and today I'm going to be letting you guys know the most efficient way to grind for those ether crystals Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a great game but like all great things there must also be something that's not so great yin and yang and all in Super Mario Odyssey it's this mini game in Super Smash Brothers it's this character God, I and in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, it's Tiger Tiger. This annoying mini game is the final challenge before we can get our maxed out robot waifus. But I'm gonna give you some tips on how to make it much more bearable. Throughout this video, I'm going to be identifying some of the core things that you need to keep doing to get the most possible amount of ether crystals per run so that we can get this mini game over and done with as quickly as possible. But however, the number one thing that you just got to do with Tiger Tiger is practice the mini game. In the beginning, you'll keep dying before you ever make it back to the surface in one piece. But over time as you practice and hopefully with the other points I'm gonna share in this video helping you out, you should be able to get perfect runs in no time. Let's quickly identify what a perfect run is. Once you make it back out of Tiger Tiger, you're greeted with the opportunity to receive three medals. And these simply consist of returning to the surface with full health, collecting every single ether crystal in the main stage, and collecting each and every chest. The final medal is simply collecting all of the other three medals. And that's what the game refers to as a perfect run. Which leads us into point number two, which is prior prioritizing what you need to acquire. The reward for collecting all ether crystals and all chests is a bonus to the amount of ether crystals that you receive. However, making it back to the surface with no damage only grants you a score bonus. And that's why when practicing, make sure that you obtain all of the ether crystals and all of the chests, even if that requires you to take a point of damage. As making it to the surface with all chests and and ether crystals will net you more ether crystals than returning simply with no damage. However, of course, for the fourth medal being perfect, you do receive more ether crystals then. So it's still in the end goal to complete the stage without taking any damage in collecting everything. However, to start off with, just prioritize those two. And out of all of them, I'd still prioritize chests. As you can get 150 ether crystals per chest with ether crystals in, compared to at most 240 ether crystals if you collect them all. Once you've got the hang of collecting the majority of the ether crystals and chests with taking little to no damage, you should probably now start to look out for the hidden stages. In each of the five stages, there are certain areas which you can enter that take you into a special stage. For this video, I will only be demonstrating stage one's hidden stage, as stage one is the only stage that I ever did, which I will demonstrate later on in the video. But if you're interested in the other stages and the other stages hidden stages check out war gasmic gaming's video on tiger tiger as he demonstrates all five hidden stages across all five stages after you watch this video of course his video link will be in the description but anyway these hidden stages grant you tons of ether crystals and in some cases alone can provide you with more ether crystals than you'd get through just a normal casual run the amount you'll get does vary depending on skill and a lot of time a bit of luck as this silly Nupon god or whatever he is seems to love to throw spinies out for me all the time. If you're extremely lucky you might even get two hidden stages in a single run. As we can see here I exited the special stage with nearly 900 ether crystals but well, because I'm bad I immediately die afterwards. However if I'd managed to get a perfect run I could have ended up with 3000 plus ether crystals from this one run. Specifically on stage one the hidden stage is always positioned between these two blocks and two jellyfish right at the side of them so if you spot these two blocks on the left hand side of the screen go for it once you leave a hidden stage as well you have brief invincibility so use that time and chance to collect any resources and any items that you might have missed speaking of items the
the next point is collecting all of the drops. If you get lucky enough to get either invincibility or the water bottles, make sure to pick them up and collect them, as they can help out so much. As well as, don't forget the collectibles that save you a chest when you get hit. I can't remember the name of them, so there'll be an image on screen now. But these are incredibly useful. Observe this gameplay, where I accidentally run into a monster and lose this collectible, but I make it all the way down to the bottom, collecting every other resource as I go, and I'm lucky enough to get a water bottle on the very final monster. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned how the first medal is returning with full health, not with no damage taken. Even if you receive damage along the way, but heal up by the end of it, you'll still get the perfect score bonus. So don't just reset if you take damage early on. So I'm now going to show you a full run of playing easy mode on stage one, primarily easy because you no longer take damage from the blocks and it also seems that you get more drops on easy mode so obviously to get as many eth crystals as possible it's better to do it that way but it's going to be a complete run where we hit the special stage and get a perfect score and basically what you want to aim for when you're doing a whole complete run you might notice through the run that i tend to float around the middle to the bottom of the stage the majority of the time you want to be as close to the bottom as possible without not being too far that you'll get hit from anything you're not expecting so that you can collect any ether crystals and anything as soon as possible and be able to get to somewhere else on the stage to collect the other uh, collectibles. It's going to take practice and learning the layout a lot of the time but once you've played the map over and over again it'll be fine. You'll be fine also only playing stage one if that's what you want to do so. There's no real reason to play other stages as you can craft whatever other items you might be able to win in Tiger Tiger through the poppy swap menu. The only exception is the light core, however there are ways of getting that. If you just want the light core just go to the bottom of stage five and make it up. It's always in the big chest never in any of the small chests. Uh, or alternatively which is the much more easy and suitable route, play New Game Plus and simply get it using AXP. We've just reached the bottom and we've just got another water bottle as I mentioned before so if I'd taken damage I would have been fine. As we're going up keep in mind that your up and down movements are highly restricted as the camera scrolls so if you go too high above anything that you might miss you probably can't come back down if you also want to phase through blocks as you're going up to avoid enemies just simply hold b beneath the block as the screen pushes you down through it by squeezing yourself into that gap the bottom of the screen which will be rising will then force you through the block which is the only way you could possibly go and now that we've finally managed to beat Tiger Tiger, it's time to trade out all of those rewards. You can go into the poppy swap menu, press Y, and you're able to crystallize, turn all the rewards that you've got and that you don't want into extra ether crystals. And by doing this in combination with all the ether crystals you'll earn through Tiger Tiger, you can earn and make a lot of ether crystals very quickly and get all the grinding that you'd need to do for ether crystals done in a couple of hours. Or alternatively, you could ignore everything else I've said in this video, go into New Game Plus, find this travelling board in Gormotti, and get a lot of ether crystals very easily, especially if you've got as much EXP on hand as I have. But anyways, thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure to subscribe down below. And until next time, guys, peace.